Hello everyone, hope you all are doing well, whether you are an experienced Python programmer or you are just learning to write the Python code, you must have seen that most of the Python applications, they have this line which starts with if double underscore name double score equals in parenthesis double, double underscore main double underscore parenthesis close. If that condition is true, then execute something. Most of us just overlook this statement in our Python code and keep coding life as usual. But have you ever thought that why that line is there? First thing. Second, what is the importance of that line? Third, what advantage you have if you are going to use that line? Or fourth, do you really need that line in your code or not? So if you have all of these questions in your mind or you haven't gave any attention to this line, I'm going to help you in this video. Here we do have a very simple Python test project which is configured to run with Python 3.10 Conda base environment. It just have a simple main.py where we have the just two lines where we are checking if the name is main then print hello. Let's run it. Hello is visible here. So the very first question comes that have you ever thought about why we are using this very first line? What if we just remove this line and we just say print hello? It is still working and that is working because the Python is the interpreted language or it uses the interpreter to execute the sentences which we are writing in our Python code. You can also understand Python as the interpreted language because you can go to command line. You can launch the Python program which is just opens up a terminal for you or a prompt for you where you could write command. You can say a is equal to 10, b is equal to 20, a plus b. Every line is being interpreted as it's been requested by the Python interpreter. Similar to that, here we are using particular py file where all the lines are written and Python interpreter is processing each line at this appear in front of the Python interpreter. Very simple concept. Here we can define a method. So let's define a method called the print hello. We just call it hello from main. And at this point, we are going to call this method print hello. Run this command. If we set up a breakpoint at this line here and we try to debug our code, we can very quickly understand a little more inside what is happening at Python interpreter level. Here you could see that there are some special variables. These are the variables such as file name, built in stock, loader, spec, package and the methods. So what we can do, we can just create a very simple Python function which can print all of these variables. So here I have just added a bunch of lines which is going to print our Python variables. Let's debug one more time. So we are printing the values of all of these special variables which are available to the Python interpreter. Let's run it. As you could see, these are the variable. First is file means which file is being used. What is the name? And here's something you can check that the name is underscore main. You might think that because our file name is main, that's why we are seeing this main. Very first thing what we will do, we will rename our file from main to app. We will run this code again. And at this point, our file is app.py, but our name is still the main. And reason why we are saying it's the main because that is the entry point for our Python application. That's why it's called main. Until now, we haven't seen a need of underscore name equals main. Now, if we comment this line, we run our code. Here you could see that all these variables are printed. However, the print hello from main is not because we are not calling this method. So it must be clear for you is that if you would want to get a function working, you have to call it. Just defining a function will not going to 
activate that function. So it is possible that you might be thinking that because we are just writing few lines of code, that's why we do not need the underscore name underscore name is equal to underscore main something like that, but that is not the case. So here is another example which I have used in one of my YouTube tutorials. Here, this is the application which is using Gradio a Python library and it has a UI based application. And here is the main where we are using the name underscore equals to main, then we are launching this whole code. And this application is fully working code. So let me show you how it works. For those who haven't seen this, I will run this application. This application is launching an UI which is available at localhost and port 7862. Here we are going to launch localhost 7862. So this is the full functional UI related with this application. I will take this whole code and I will copy here. I will take this main code. I will use only these lines. I will paste at the very bottom and this code does not have anywhere main. Let's clear it, run it. This application is running on port 7863. And same application is running here. And this application does not need anything to do with if name is main. So why? That is what we are going to understand next by using few more examples. Let's stop it, debug this code. And even in this code, if you look into the name is main. So it should be very clear for you as this point is that there is something has to do with underscore underscore name to underscore equals main. So while we are talking about these variables with two underscore then name then two underscore, we also call them magic variables or we also call them dunder variables. Dunder means double underscore. That's why it's called the dunder. So if I call this dunder name equals dunder main, then you can get an idea that it's using the double underscore with the word which I'm using on both sides. Let's close it. I will go back to our original code. So this was our original code where we started. Clean it out. Next, we are going to create a new file and I will call it file2.py and I will create a new method called define hello from file2. So we have added this file. We can also just say print, come back to app.py and run our code. At this point, you are only getting these lines printed here. You are not getting any reference to any of the methods you have in this project. So one more thing I would also like to clear at this point that when we are running this code, why we are getting this log reason is getting reason we are getting this log because when we are either running or debugging this application, our main file is app.py and that is configured here. You see app.py. If I change from app.py to file do file 2.py, then that file will become the main file. File 2 is our file now. And let's run now. And in this case, now the file 2 is your entry point and you are only getting this file 2. If you comment this line and you run the, your code, you won't get anything because nothing is being printed. So whatever file is you are using as the main entry file, that's where the execution is start. And before I go back and change our main script from file2 to, to app.py, I would like to show you that the configuration is exactly the same. Let me put a breakpoint here, debug it. And if you look into these variables, you are going to see everything is same. The the dunder name is equal to dunder main. Everything is same. The only difference is the file is equal to file2.py, not the app.py or the main.py. So let's come back, change this to app.py. So this method is defined in file2 and we are calling this method also in file2, but our main file is app.py. Let's run it. And if you see here, we do not have any reference to file2 here because at this point only the app.py was launched and there was no reference to file2.py. Now let's import the method from file2 to here in the app.py so we can say from. Now we have just imported the method here. 
let's run the code again and as you see here that as soon as we have imported now the hello from file 2 is being printed this one if we go back and comment this line run this code again now the reference to this file 2 is not available if we comment this line and enable this line back run this code you do not see the line coming out from this method because we haven't referenced let's put it back we run this code hello from file 2 is being used if we take this and use this hello from file 2 from here to here let's see what happens now you see that as soon as you have imported this method that method has already been ran one time and it's also running second time when you have called here but you are not calling that method here still it's running and that's a very first problem now and that is what is helping the dunder name equals main and now we are coming into there so very first time we have seen the problem and the problem is that as soon as we have referenced a method from a particular file whether we call it or not if that method has been called in target file that method is gonna show up here in our main file we haven't called however because this method has been called in file number two it is going to show its result here let's run it again and that's what we are seeing here we, we are not using this method at all so let's remove from here we come back and we are calling this method here we are also calling this method print hello here so now we are calling the method from file 2 and method from app.py let's run it now these lines are also being rendered and the execution from these two methods are also being rendered one thing we can validate the file so file related information so we can take this method print we can actually take this method and add here we can also add here now if we run it again now you are also getting that this hello is coming out from file 2 and this line is coming out from app.py so until now this is clear however that as soon as you are going to reference this method here now that method is appearing back into the main app.py even when we haven't referenced here we have referenced here so in order to protect it you are going to make sure that the execution is going to happen in this app.py it has to control so how you control it you will say that if tender name is equal to tender main and you already know that in this file the name is main then you will run this code now and let's run the code and see that if this problem is removed Run the code so as you could see that we ran the code but the execution of this code is still there it means that the reference was used and that reference already immediate ran it you would want to stop that axis you could actually use the same line here and if you will apply this line here so what we have done we have taken this line and we have added this line here that if it is the main then only run this code let's run this code back at this point the previous execution which was because of this reference has been gone as you could see here and only reference where it's used here has been seen here so that's the very first thing you are blocking the execution of certain function by protecting the entry point for that particular python file and why this code didn't run here because we can validate by using name in both methods so we can use name method here we can also use the name method here let's run the code again now you can see that in the file 2 the name is file 2 and in this main app the name is main and for that reason when it this code is running here it's expecting the name must be main and that's why this code is not running so this line is basically the guard 
So this line is the guard line for the execution first. Second, why you need to guard? Because you might be having so many of these files in your project and they might have execution for an application. So if you are incorporating a lots of code in your project, but your entry point is only main, it will guarantee that the execution flow which you would want in your application has been guarded correctly. And that's what this if dunder name is equal to dunder main is right, then the execute the code. It does not matter whatever your main execution file name is. You can call it hello world.py. As soon as you change that to your particular configuration to a script entry point, that's all it needed. So you might say, should we use this guard line or not? You must use guard line, whether you are running your application as a standalone or you are running as a module. You have to have that guard line to make sure that you have full control on the execution of your code. One more thing we can check before we go is that even when we have guard line added, we still have these lines being executed because Python is just an entrepreneur. It looks into the code and if it has to interpret, it will interpret. So it's better if you would want to use it correctly, you can convert that to a method. You can call it define app info. And now it became a method. But as soon as you are going to call it wherever you would want, now the execution will be available for that content. So when you are writing the Python code, you need to make sure that everything you are writing is really being packaged into a method and wherever it's applicable, you are going to call that method and that is what is going to render the result of that method. So whether you are creating a Python scripted application or you are creating a Python module, I just want you to make sure that whenever you are writing your Python code, make sure that you are using this guard statement in your code so that you have better control and better execution of your code in your Python application. That's all I have to share with you. Thank you so much for your time and I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next video. Until then, thank you so much.